Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Ona Ramsey, one of the careers advisors and employer liaison at the University of the West of Scotland in the careers team. So today we have a guest speaker, uh, Nazanin, uh, who is going to tell us how to get into the civil service. And Nazanin's uh, job title is civil service past streamer. So somebody who has a personal experience of getting into the civil, ser civil service using the fast stream scheme. Thank you, Nazanin. Thank you very much for the introduction. I'll just share some slides um, for the session. Um, do let me know if there are any issues seeing them. Okay. Okay. Um, so as mentioned, this session will be about the civil service more broadly and the civil service fast stream, which is something which I personally have more experience of. It's coming to you courtesy of the Fast Stream and Gender Equality Network. So that's just a group of fast streamers who um, come together to arrange outreach sessions at universities. And that's how we've come to speak to you today. Um, so as a brief introduction, my name is Nazanin. I'm a second year fast streamer on the generalist scheme. Um, the scheme consists of doing different postings in different departments each year. So currently I'm posted to the Department for Work and Pensions and I'm working on departmental governance. That type of role is usually about arranging meetings for senior officials and the permanent secretary who is the head of the whole department. Um, and on a day-to-day -day basis, it involves things like preparing agendas, speaking with teams about what materials they want to bring to the meetings, and also issuing actions and making sure that they've done the things that they've committed to do. Um, I started this role in September, so, and last year I was working at the Department for International Trade, and that was as an EU policy advisor. Policy advisor roles are pretty common on the fast stream, and they'll involve things like becoming an expert in that particular area and writing briefings and advising um, ministers and senior officials on the best way forward for that particular policy area. And for me, it was on trade with the European Union. Uh, my journey into the civil service started as an executive officer, so that's one grade below higher executive officer, which is the fast stream grade, and that was at the Department of Health and Social Care. After I graduated, uh, working on the COVID program, as you might imagine, in 2020, there was a lot of recruitment in the Department for Health um, because of the pandemic. And in terms of my educational background, I studied modern languages at university, followed by a master's in international relations and graduated in 2020. And I've been based in London um, the whole time. Um, just to note before we start that you may have heard in the media that the fast stream was paused for 2023. Um, very, very recently, they've announced that it's actually back on. Um, so just bear that in mind when we go forward. Um, and in terms of the session today, I'm hoping to cover um, an introduction to what the civil service and the civil service fast stream are all about, um, what it's like to work in the civil service and the fast stream, what some potential routes are into the civil service, and also how you can demonstrate your skills when applying to civil service roles. So what is the civil service? The civil service essentially helps the government to develop and carry out their policies across the UK. Nazanin, and that includes, yes, Nazanin, yes. sorry for interrupting. Uh, your slides are not moving, so do you, if you put it on the uh, oh really presentation, okay. yeah, presentation mode, that would be great. Thank you. Sure, it is actually on presentation mode because for me it's moved. Um, let's see. Um, maybe if I stop sharing and reshare, hopefully that will work. Yeah, thank you. Sorry about that. Okay, hopefully that's moved on. It has for me. Yes, yeah, now we can Is see. Is that okay? Oh, okay, that's great. Um, so what is the civil service? It helps the government to develop and carry out policies across the UK, and that includes devolved administrations, um, so Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales. 
um, the civil service is politically impartial, so it works with the elected government of the day. And unlike some other countries like the US, where their civil service kind of changes with each government, ours stays the same, um, regardless of what your own political views might be. Uh, there are over 400,000 civil servants across the UK. So as you can imagine, it's a really vast organization with a huge range of areas um, and potential roles that might be involved if you have a career in the civil service. Um, essentially, um, the best way to look at it is that the governments are the elected representatives um, that we end up with after elections, and they're responsible for running the country and making decisions on how uh, new laws are passed and deciding how public money is spent. Our role as civil servants is to work across a huge number of these areas and to help the, the government plan and deliver um, on these commitments that they've made to the electorate. Um, so just by way of an example, and as you'll see some, from some of the pictures on the screen, um, you have civil servants at the Department for Education who might be responsible for schools. Those in Department of Health and Social Care will be responsible for hospitals. Um, in the Department of Transport, civil servants will have responsibilities to work on public transport, including things like local buses and trams. Um, and as you'll also see from the screen, we have much bigger examples like Brexit, um, there were a huge number of civil servants involved in that, um, as well as areas like defense, sustainability, energy, basically anything that you might see in the media day to day. Um, and so hopefully moving on to the next slide, let me know if you can't see it. Um, so as we've mentioned, um, a wide variety of roles are available in across the civil service, working on a lot of the issues mentioned on the previous slide. Um, just to give a few more kind of specific and concrete examples, um, within the fast stream especially, there have been civil servants involved in delivering COP26 last year um, and climate change policy that will go across departments like um, the Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy, but also the Department for Environment and the Foreign Office too. Um, there have been civil servants involved in delivering the new Elizabeth Line in London, um, in the Department for Transport, and there have also been civil servants based in HMRC who are responsible for catching businesses, avoiding tax. Um, there are also areas like gambling policy, um, NHS test and trace, which you may well remember, was based in the Department for Health. And of course, there's the Department for Trade that negotiates trade deals with different countries. Um, so this is really just seeking to give an idea of the wide variety of roles that are available and the different areas that they can cover. So I've seen from the chat that there are a number of you doing social sciences, um, within that kind of broader umbrella, there's definitely um, a wide variety of issues that you could end up working on in the civil service. Um, and even for those with qualifications and things like business, there's a commercial profession um, that is also kind of forms part of the civil service. So really any job that you can imagine, there's probably someone doing it in the civil service or scope for someone to be doing it. And moving on to the next slide. Um, this um, is really here to give you an idea of the kind of job titles that you might have um, as a civil servant. So you may have heard of kind of policy advisors, which is the kind of role that I had last year. Um, but it's really not just about people making policy. There are a huge number of different jobs available. Um, so there are jobs related to delivery of services, and that tends to be much more frontline, like people, someone like a prison officer or a vehicle standards assessor, for example. Um, the department I'm currently working in as the Department for Work and Pensions also has a lot of delivery staff and operational staff working on front lines in places like job centers. Um, so there's definitely a kind of customer service element, which is an option if that's something you're interested in, as well as more kind of back of house policy advice, research, that sort of thing. Um, in addition to that, for people with more specialized um, academic paths, there are also science-based roles such as science advisor, social researcher, maybe interesting for you who've done social sciences degrees, and engineer. Um, there are also roles that help the civil service run on a day-to-day -day basis. So that will be things like private secretary, 
Um, the private secretary role is a really interesting one. It usually involves being kind of responsible for a minister or senior official's um, office and kind of arranging their diary day to day and really prioritizing what kind of information ministers have to see. So it's a really high profile role to have. Um, there are also a wide variety of professions within the civil service. Um, so that will be things like communications, policy, um, science. There's also a trade profession, which is much more recent. And that kind of gives people more of a pathway within their career to follow. So you can kind of stay in that specialist area if that's something that you want to do. And so moving on to the next slide. Um, a bit, a bit more information about what the civil service fast stream is. So I've, as you've seen, um, there are a wide variety of different routes into the civil service. The civil service fast stream is just one of them and can potentially lead to the kind of roles and responsibilities that we've just mentioned. Um, so more specifically, the fast stream is a development scheme and is kind of advertised as a fast track to leadership within the civil service. It's a graduate scheme. Um, most of the streams within it need a 2-2 or above in any university degree, um, but some of the more specialist one will need higher or specific degrees. Um, that usually is the case with things like science and engineering in particular. The length of the scheme is usually three to four years, but it will depend um, on the stream. Currently, there are 15 different ones, and that includes generalist, which I'm on, and this is three years long, but also commercial, project delivery, digital and data, finance, science and engineering, engineering as well as things like diplomatic as well. Um, while you're on the fast stream, you could have a role in just about any department doing any kind of job. Um, you'll change roles usually on a yearly or kind of six month basis, and you'll be in a different department for each of your postings. So as you might imagine, one of the benefits of that is that you'll have exposure to different jobs and roles, um, which is a really valuable thing to have, I think, as a new graduate and as someone who's at the start of your career. You'll also have in-scheme options. So sometimes within some of these schemes, you can specialize. Um, I know that for generalists, for example, they introduced one that focuses on environment and kind of net zero. So that's that might be of interest to some people. Um, it's also very good for building networks earlier, early in your career because you move around so much, you'll end up having quite a wide network in the civil service without having to really put much effort into it. Um, there are, however, some negatives or potential worries for people on the scheme. I think one of the key ones is the potential for relocation. So when you sign up for the fast stream, you kind of accept that they may well relocate you to a different part of the country for that role. Um, that's not kind of super strict. So if you do have caring responsibilities or personal reasons, you might be able to negotiate and stay in a particular location if you want to. Um, Kind of the, the other side of the coin with having to move around every year is that you do have a lack of choice about your role compared to if you decide to apply directly. Um, you can express preferences, but often they'll kind of put you where the departments have the most need um, for staff. Um, the salaries can also be lower than the kind of direct entry salaries, um, and there's no London waiting, which might be an issue um, given the cost of living in, in bigger cities. Um, that being said, uh, most people would say that the negatives um, aren't are kind of able to be overcome and that the positives really outweigh these. Usually within the kind of three years of the scheme, you can graduate to a middle management role, which is usually known as grade seven. And often the kind of the positive of having that promotion outweighs any of the kind of negatives you've had during the scheme. Um, and just to note that the applications, despite them initially being said that it would be closed, will open this December. So keep an eye out if that's something you're interested in. There is a fast stream website um, and that will be for roles starting in September or October 2023. Um, and soon I'll come around for some questions, but just um, what a further slide on more reasons why you should consider applying to the civil service or fast stream is that there is a culture of flexible working. Um, a lot of departments are kind of doing hybrids, so you'll have a few days at home, a few days in the office every week. Um, there's also a lot of 
um, facilities in place for people with responsibilities outside of work. So you can do flexible hours, um, work longer Monday to Thursday and have a Friday off, that sort of thing. But it's really much, it's really up to what you manage to negotiate with your line manager. Um, there are also great progression opportunities. I think aside from the fast stream, once you're in the civil service, it's pretty easy to move around. Um, you'll have access to an internal pool of jobs. So you can always kind of pick and choose what you do um, and to find a role that you really enjoy and helps you progress in your career. Uh, it's also possible to gain qualification. So on some of the fast stream schemes specifically, like commercial, for example, and project delivery as well, you'll gain qualifications for free while you're on the scheme. And of course, um, that can be a huge help. And I think regardless of the role, there's always scope to be learning new skills. And there's a lot of focus on learning and development as well. Um, you'll be earning a competitive salary. Um, I think it's on par with most graduate schemes. Um, and for early, for early or entry level careers, I think the salaries can be quite reasonable. Um, you'll have access to a wide range of networks and social opportunities. So it's a great way to kind of get to know people when you're starting out. And there's also a lot of emphasis on equality, diversity and inclusion and scope to kind of do work on that. So just by way of an example, um, while I was on the scheme, I've been involved in the Fast Stream Gender Equality Network. And that's something I've really enjoyed and it's been a really nice way to kind of um, get out and about and get to know people on the Fast Stream, but also come to events like these, which I've really enjoyed. Um, so before we move on to the next section, which will focus more on how to actually get into these roles and what is looked for in applications, I'll just open up to some questions. Um, hopefully to give you an opportunity if you thought of anything you'd want to ask. Feel free to put any of the chat apps, um, or if not, we can always move on and come up to questions at the end. Hi. Hello. Yes. All right, my name is Charles. Um, I've got a question. I'm an international student at the university doing my postgraduate studies. So um, I was wondering, are these opportunities, are they also available to international um, immigrants and all whatnot? Because I know some jobs when you're applying, they said they are not um, open to people with a certain, a certain category of visa. So I'd like to know, getting into the UK civil service, is it um, open to diverse individual regardless of where you're from or whether you're a citizen of the united kingdom thanks thank you very much that's a really good question and one that we've been asked before um so i do have a slide actually specifically on this um so i might come back to it at the end but i think a main headline for international students is that generally the civil service unfortunately doesn't do visa sponsorships for most roles um, so usually they would require that you already have the right to live and work in the UK um, in order to have those roles. There is more flexibility on nationality. So usually, unless it's kind of a really high profile role on something like national security, it's fine to be a dual national or have other nationalities beyond kind of UK citizenship. I would say that generally um, visa sponsorship isn't an option, but there are specific categories who can um, still apply and I'll come to that because we've listed them more specifically on one of the slides at the end. I hope that goes Thank some you. way in answering the question. Yes, it does. Thanks. Okay. Um, assuming there are no further questions, I can move along to the next section. Um, so Seems that once again, my slides are not moving. Okay, um, so applying to the fast stream or civil service and how to demonstrate your skills. So just to go over some of what we've said already, um, there are many different ways to get into the civil service. One option is direct entry. So that will involve applying directly to a department for a specific entry level role. Um, all civil service jobs have to be advertised on um, the link uh, noted there. So it's just civil service jobs. Um, if you Google it, it's literally the first one that comes up. And when you go on it, 
um, you can put in your location as well as the department and grade that you want to apply for and it will show you a list of roles that are available. Um, and it's also worth noting that there's an option to um, kind of filter by grade and location. So when that does come up, usually for graduates um, or entry level roles, I would say um, higher executive officer grade or executive officer grade is usually recommended as kind of a good level to come into the civil service. But if you're kind of quite keen to get in as soon as possible, you may want to go for an EVA lower grade, um, which is perfectly fine. And then once you're in, it's really easy to move around and kind of apply for the next level up as well. So I wouldn't be too worried about having the kind of the perfect role on your first job after graduating. Um, another option is apprenticeships. This is probably of less interest to you as graduates, but um, it's not kind of closed off to graduates. So if you wanted to, you could also do an apprenticeship. Um, so that usually involves earning, earning while, you, while, while you learn. So it will be a paid position that you do. And at the same time, you'll study for professional accreditation as well. Um, usually once the apprenticeship is completed, you'll have the relevant knowledge and skills to progress in that chosen field, what, field whatever it might be. Um, I think the next two options are probably most suitable for you as kind of a group of university students and graduates. So the civil service does have internships. Um, those are the early diversity internship program, uh, which is a one week kind of shadowing experience, usually in your first year of university and also the summer diversity internship program, which usually takes place in your penultimate or final year of university over the summer period. You can apply for those from the main fast stream website. There was a bit of uncertainty about whether they would happen or not, given the fast stream pause. Um, but based on what I know, I think they will be taking place. So if you meet the eligibility criteria, which is usually being from a kind of black or minority ethnic background, or from a low socioeconomic background, I definitely recommend looking into those options because it can be a great way to get an insight into how the civil service actually works and also how to best prepare for a fast stream application too. Um, so like we've already discussed, the fast stream is another option to get into the civil service. Um, it's definitely not the only one, but I think I've already outlined some of the main advantages of it if it's something that interests you. Um, so I'll focus a little bit on fast stream recruitment just because it's something I have more experience of compared to direct applications. Um, and if you're looking to apply in September, um, it's definitely worth bearing this process in mind. So the recruitment process has a combination of online tests, video interviews and an assessment center. Um, it's possible that now that they're doing the applications in December rather than kind of September, which was the usual time frame, um, some of these bits might be shortened or might be kind of cut out. Unfortunately, we don't know yet. Usually the online tests are called work-based scenarios. So it will give you a situation that might happen in real life in your job. And it will ask you what would you do with a multiple choice options um, to choose from. Then if you pass that stage, there's a video interview. Um, that's virtual, so you won't be talking directly to anyone, but it's a pre-recorded um, set of questions. So for that one, it's quite recommended to plan your answer in advance and then maybe practice recording and doing the answers um, before you actually do the video interview. Um, some of the questions they might ask in that is about how you've shown teamwork, leadership, organization or value for money. So you can quite easily use examples from university, like if you've been on a sports team or a society that you might have been president of or taken part in. Then once you've passed all those stages, there's an assessment center. So that's a half a day, usually with three exercises, a group one and an individual one and a written one. Um, there is some guidance that they issue beforehand about kind of what the day will include. Um, so you won't go into it completely um, unknown. And it's worth remembering, though, that most people don't get onto the fast stream on their first application. I personally didn't. Um, it took me a couple of tries to get in. So that's perfectly normal and not something to be kind of really disappointed by. Um, because there is a certain skill to the application process and often it's hard to know what it is until you've actually given it a go. Um, 
But regardless of whether you're applying for the FAST stream or applying directly, you should know that the civil service recruits based on a set of behaviors and strengths. So it's really important to understand these um, in your application process. Um, so a bit of information on using your skills in your application. Um, as we've mentioned, the civil service uses behavior-based recruitment. Um, I highly recommend just Googling civil service behaviors. It's one of the first kind of PDF documents that comes up will list what those are, and it's really useful to familiarize yourself with those. Um, usually behavioral questions, which you might get in an interview or in an application, are an opportunity for you to reflect on what you've already done. Um, so the person interviewing or assessing you can use what you've told them as an assumption about what your future performance will be like. Um, so if you've shown strengths in certain areas, they can then assume that if they offer you a job, you'll also have those kind of strengths on the job too. Um, that also means that there are a set of behaviors that, that are expected from civil servants at different stages of the career. So if you take a look at that behaviors document, you'll see that there are nine behaviors in total. That includes things like um, seeing the bigger picture, leadership, community, communicating and influencing and working together. Um, so at various stages of the recruitment process or written applications um, or interviews, you'll be asked to demonstrate how um, you've shown these behaviors. Um, so that's really important to always bear in mind, be prepared to answer those types of questions. I know that often if you're early in your career or still at university, it can be quite difficult to know how to demonstrate those experiences um, and behaviors. But just to reassure you in this session, um, we want to show that you can really use any experience that you have, um, whether it's from a part time job kind of in a restaurant or in a bar, or whether it's something that you've gained from a group project or society university. Um, those are still really valid examples to use in order to make your application stronger and demonstrate that you have the behaviors they're looking for. Um, so just to follow, we'll give, I'll give some uh, guidance and tips on how to structure these answers and also some kind of examples of what's, what would be a useful example to give for each behavior. So moving on to the next slide, one of the behaviors that we have um, is called communicating and influencing. So the headline description for that is to communicate purpose and direction with clarity, integrity and enthusiasm, respect for needs, responses and opinion of others. So that's that sounds really high level and on a first glance, it might be difficult to understand how exactly you can demonstrate it without having that specific civil service experience already. Um, but I would suggest examples like um, giving presentations, lab reports, dissertations, um, any campaigning that you have done, teaching and mentoring. These are all really valid examples that you can use to demonstrate these behaviors. Um, so I hope that gives an idea of what you can use. Um, but I would say that it's also really important to remember that it's useful to refer back to the behavior and how it's been written in the documents. Um, so this is just kind of one headline descriptor of the behavior. But if you look at the PDF, you'll see that for each level, um, whether senior kind of entry level or kind of middle managers, there's a much more detailed breakdown of what the behavior should look like and how it should be demonstrated well. So I will always recommend going back to that and seeing whether you've been able to tick off those kind of smaller points within the example that you're giving. Um, so just as an example, if you want to use teaching and mentoring as your example for that behavior, really emphasize and think about how you role modeled enthusiasm while you were a teacher or mentor, and also how did you change or use your communication style and methods to demonstrate that communicating and influencing behavior. Um, so moving on to the next slide, um, another behavior is leadership. Um, so that's really important and looked for a lot, specifically with the FAST stream, just because they're hoping that you'll pass the scheme and go on to a leadership position. Um, a lot of people do tend to assume that leadership is about managing someone else or leading a team, but that really doesn't have to be the case. So if you look at the description, it talks about showing pride and passion for public service, create and engage others in delivering a shared vision, 
value difference, diversity and inclusion, ensuring fairness and opportunity for all. So just from that description, there are lots of different ways you could demonstrate it. Um, for example, um, you might want to show engagement in the course or project you were involved in. So that's really applicable to um, volunteering, but also sports teams, um, any kind of society, even if it's a running society, if it's something that you've been involved in and kind of included others in, that's a really valid example to use, um, as well as group projects or any kind of work placement that you have done, whether it's in the public sector, private sector, charity sector, doesn't really matter. Um, I think for leadership options, uh, leadership um, examples, um, it's really important that the options you choose um, really emphasize how you've motivated other people and also include the diversity and inclusion angle um, as well, just to show that you understand that when you are leading a team, you emphasize the need for fairness and giving everyone an equal opportunity. Um, so yeah, just to reiterate, it's always really useful to read the descriptor and also the more detailed breakdowns just to give you a clearer idea of what it is they're looking for. Um, it also helps you understand what the interviewer or assessor actually has in front of them and what the criteria is that they're marking you against. Um, so moving on, how to structure your answers. Um, it's great when you have as a starting point knowing which example you want to use when talking about your behaviours, but it's also really important to structure them in the correct way. Um, so you may be familiar with this from other careers events that you've attended, but the recommended way of structuring your answers is the STAR method. Um, so that will focus on the situation to begin with. That's usually a very small percentage of the answer, so I wouldn't go into a huge amount of details on it. But that's just to give the wider context of what, what your role was, for, for instance. Um, and that will then lead into tasks, so talking about what it is that you actually had to do. Um, then you'll talk about what you did, so your action. That should really be the majority of um, the behavior example that you give, um, so I would say 50 to kind of 70% of the answer should be focused on the action because that's really where you get to demonstrate the behavior the most. And then finally, you have the response. Um, that's really key. So what was the impact of the action that you did? How can you show that it was successful and demonstrates the behavior in a kind of, um, in a stand standout way? Um, so just as an example, if you wanted to use um, a group project as, at university as one of your examples, you could start with saying that this was a group project at un university and a little bit about what the group project was. Then in your task, you can explain what it is you had to do. For example, did you have to convince people of your opinion or viewpoint at, at, um, at any point during this task? Then you can explain what you did. So you may have come together with your group to create a common focus. You may have planned out the presentation together. You might have mapped it out with the key points to your argument and then formed a solid structure for your presentation. Then you can go into um, the final section, which is focused on what was the feedback from the presentation and your group? Did you get a good grade? Did you feel the result? The rest of your group had a real common focus on the project? And how did this show? So that's just trying to give an example of how that behavior might be mapped onto a real experience you've had at university. Um, so yeah, as noted, do concentrate on the action and the result. Um, even if the result wasn't completely successful, that's okay. You can focus instead on what you learned from it and what you would do differently next time. Um, but that being said, if you have statistics, a percentage or anything like that to back up that the result was successful, that's really great. Um, so, for example, if you were involved in a charity fundraising, if you manage to fundraise a lot, you can always give a kind of quantity that always helps support your behavior as well. Um, with all this being said, you don't have to completely stick to the format all the time. But I think that it is a good framework to use and make sure that you include everything that you need to um, to really convey your experience and the impact that you've had. Um, so this is pretty applicable, not just to civil service, but also any role that you apply for to, um, in other industries as, as well. 
Um, so just a few more kind of do's and don'ts about the star model. Um, definitely make sure you use I and not we. The interviewer or assessor is not really interested in what your group did as a whole. They're interested in what you did. Um, always use active verbs like I developed, I introduced. Don't passive voice like it was decided or it was introduced. Um, make sure to use powerful, powerful words if you can, just to really emphasize um, your impact. Um, think about the presentation. Um, so that will include think, checking spelling, grammar, and word count. Um, make sure you keep it succinct, but manage to cover your key points. So don't go into unnecessary detail um, because there will be a word limit um, or a time limit usually. And then always keep refining your example. So if you've used that example once, keep thinking about how you can improve it um, the next time that you use it. Um, and some don'ts, don't use jargon, abbreviations, or specialist terms, since it's pretty unlikely that your interviewer or assessor will know what those are. Um, don't tell a really long and rambling story, just stick to the kind of concise uh, structure if you can. Um, don't just explain a process, make sure it's always rooted around what you did, your actions. Um, like you said, don't use the passive voice. Try not to use too many generalizations and really kind of keep it specific to the task. Um, definitely don't assume that others have knowledge of the situation you are presenting. So try to keep it high level. That really goes hand in hand with not using abbreviations or specialist terms. And last but not least, don't go over the word limit because additional words will be discounted. Always stick within the limit that they've told you. So that gives a really kind of um, high level overview of what recruitment looks like in the civil service. This is applicable both across the fast stream application process and also direct applications as well. And I hope that's been useful in giving you an idea of what it is that um, is looked for in applications. So I will end there because I've been speaking at you for a long time. Um, I hope you found that introduction useful and there's a lot of time I think left for questions so we can move on to that. Just because we've had the question already about um, international students eligibility. Um, so this slide kind of goes through some of the detail specifically on the fast stream in this kind of box on the top left. Um, it does list what the nationality requirements are. So you'll see that you'll have to be um, either a UK national, um, potentially a national of a Commonwealth country if you have the right to work in the UK, Republic of Ireland nationals, um, those with settled status, um, and also specific EU, EEA, Swiss or Turkish nationals. Um, so the nationality requirements are pretty specific and visa sponsorship generally um, is not the case, unfortunately. Um, what you can do as well um, on the FastStream website is that it has a section on eligibility. So from the drop down menus, you can click um, what your nat nationality status is and then what degree you have. And as you'll see um, in the colored boxes, it gives you a list of what you would be eligible to apply for. Um, so hopefully that will help as well. Um, so I'll just go back to the slide on questions or potentially stop sharing. Um, so yeah, I hope that's been useful and will open to any questions that you might want to ask. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, that was very uh, structured and well informative presentation. I'll stop the recording so that um, people can um, uh, unmute themselves and open you know, their camera if they want. Okay, thanks very much.